So what did I think of that Andor? I think I could probably talk about it for the rest of the year. Just bits and pieces that could be enjoyed or were worth knowing, or it's a matter of, you know, there's been a bit of a revolution, hasn't there, in recent times in television writing as to where the walk's gone out the window and they're looking right past it. Past it. As where we all should be looking. It's got old. They've grown out of it. One by one, they've all been dispelled of it and now see it a step further and it'd be a matter of mm, tyranny. And it's like the tyranny they saw coming with Trump and it's like, nah, he was he was on the same side as you. He was just portrayed on the wrong side. So there's a lot of games being played. It's like if, if the Empire, right, was like the Empire in Star Wars, the real, you know, powers of this world that ought to be far and over, you know, beaten down it's like if, if if they just openly called themselves the empire we could fucking mobilize against them quite easily it's like let's start costing them money all over the place let's fuck with them goes on people are already at it people are already rebels against the system all over the place it's like i see myself as like a, a veteran of various different wars, various different rebellions. You can talk openly without uh, now about things you knew 20 years ago, where 20 years ago you couldn't say nothing. And you had no means to tell anyone your story. So when you were fucked over then, you were pretty trapped. Now, there's a little bit more. It's like we can be a little bit bolder in what we might be trying to say. So it's like, just to look at something rather, I mean, in my own way, funny and superficial. And so uh, in the last episode of Andor, the best TV murder I've ever seen was in that episode. It's Sinta, as she called. The... Uh, Rather attractive, small Indian assassin. It's like she just flatly follows a guy she's been keeping tabs on who she knows is uh, keeping tabs on others. So she's watching a secret agent. She's watching a spy. And they're used to not being followed. So what does she do when she sets about wanting to kill him? He's, he's good at not being followed. So she follows him. And he turns, oh, you're following me. And because he sees that we're a young woman who's seen nothing. And he's this huh, imperial. When he kind of gets a bit too close to what he should and decides he can just grab hold of her. Dead. Stabs him. Kills him. Makes fucking sure he's dead. And it'd be Oh, you're better than... She's like, she's better than Carol, or the Evil Dead. Uh, sorry, The Walking Dead. And Carol's, to, to my mind, female murderer, number one in all of, like, television. Carol is brilliant. She is... She's the one who will do the killing so you don't have to. So I've dealt with it. Oh, so I don't have to go and kill them. I don't like killing people so much. She's like, I'm over it. I've, I've done the killing. Don't worry about it. It's so like the best male killer who you'd want on side is Amos out of the Expanse. Definitely. It's like a, if they could do some... Um, no, don't, they don't need to bring that. They don't need to bring that character in. It's like they've they've gone with a better killer than um, Amos. Amos wouldn't stand a chance against someone as dangerous as that. He'll say, I'll just you... I'll be whatever you think I am. Get you close and then murder you. That's... Um, Part of why that Brienne of Tarth was so dangerous in the box at Game of Thrones is that while people were like, is that a woman dead? It's like if you look to just kill them while they're scratching their head about what they're doing fighting a woman, most of them would be dead by the time they've uh, finished thinking about it. It'll be That'd be, that'd be how the job's done in the fucking big leagues. You never see... That guy getting stabbed away did, got murdered off. A rebel spy. 
got clean away, never saw it coming. No fucking problem. Ghost. Gone. And it'd be a matter of, she hasn't got much of a backstory. And it's like, we don't talk anything to her about anything. But she's stone cold and she's a murderer. So she's the one you want on your side. It's like stormtroopers slaughtered her family, right? So it's like stormtroopers in this show are the guys they send in just to brutalize, as to say, bash, bash, wallop, and the, with them all being just masked. No one's ever held accountable for anything that they do. And no one can actually say as to which stormtrooper it was who killed their family. Or what his motivation personally in the moment might have been. He just might have been, you know, scum people, out of rim, savages. Fuck you. Pfft. So it's like the, the, the Empire leaves its mark in that it namelessly, facelessly, and in the name of the Emperor, faceless man, murdered your relatives. So Andor, it's like uh, Cassian. His dad, right, was Paul Truman out of EastEnders. And it's like, when when he was just, they put him in it, I just showed him. And I'm like, oh, it's Paul Truman out of EastEnders. He's one of these actors who's just naturally amiable and a likeable fella. He's got similar attributes to the... Um, Similar attributes in a lot of ways to the guy who plays um, the lad in The Walking Dead with the stick. Lenny Lenny James, real life. He's like a you know he's like a friendly guy. Is uh, the got that he can talk to you in that way as to he knows thing going on. He was a likable character in everything he's ever been in, and it's like he's a really likable character. It's like oh we'll cast him in this and. Stormtroopers make an example of him. He's actually a smart fella. It's like, uh, he's a guy who's got his wits about him. He's a scrapper. He's a salvager. He's someone who knows how to turn scrap into sellable goods. So it's a matter of he's, uh, in his own way, a tinkerer and a genius and a nice fellow and well-loved by everyone. And... The Empire decide one day to make a bit of a an example or a scene and he's the one who tells the crowd no not to fight and then when you know a, a loose brick hits a stormtrooper he's the one they made an example of killed him hung him so like, how far does it get to a uh, small like Cassian my, and his mother might just say, look, enough of this. It's like, there's no, no one really knows what happens on that planet because there's something about that show as to where it does that, as to where in, in real life, you know, people who suffer terrible, terrible tragedy and stuff, they never get to find out what happens. They never get closure. That's something from movies where we get to find out what happens. Well, they never do. People go missing and they just never see them again. Gone. So like he's got right every right in the world to have a beef and it'd be a matter of but this is a fucking game isn't it this is a mind game i don't know who killed my father because he was a man in a mask fucking stormtrooper and then it's like oh we've got this guy on record uh assaulting a, a, an imperial and it's a matter of when did he kill his dad took retribution on a stormtrooper. I don't know which one of you killed my dad, but I'll tell you fucking what. And then it's a matter of, well, who do I go up against? Fucking thousands of them. It's like that faceless killer game they play. It's like, that's so tyrannically 
evil. No accountability, no nothing. It's like the Empire function actually is just a... Um, they're just slavers. Muscle and unopposed. So the Empire turn up and it's like, oh, there's the Empire have arrived. And it'd be, they hit the ground and they round up a lot of your citizens. Arrest them. Find them guilty of breaking some law, some minor infraction. Accuse them of anti-imperial behaviour and then send them to a labour camp. They were just slavers. They just came along and they needed manpower and they just came and they took it and they said, "He, uh, we've got reason to believe he said something anti-imperial to one of our, uh, in, our secret informants. We bring up in, in front of an imperial tribunal, bang, five years in prison. What? To then be sent to prison making widgets and you don't know what you're making widgets you're making you're making part of something bigger that you're not allowed to know what it is and it's like this is uh this is work that actually takes a human eye of cur to see that it's right it's cheaper that we do it this way It's easier to keep something secret if you've got like disposable people working on it. So it's a matter of right. They come in. You you work on you work at the factory. You live in the a, a prison where you've got no privacy, none, not at all. <coughs> Pavlovian. Pushed as hard to to work as hard as you possibly can with. Nothing to break. Nothing. No other stimuli. Nothing at all. And then when you finish your sentence, they transport you somewhere else. So you thought you were being set free. <laughs> no, we can't have you mouthing off that we have people working in those conditions. You're going somewhere else. So what's the next step when you get let out of prison in, under the Empire? Uh, I think it's probably going... You know, down that line, it would be organ harvesting. You'd be sent to some uh, medical research planet. It's my hunt would my hunch would be uh, under that time of the empire, they send you to Wayland, and it'd be white, and it'd be like you become like biomass for the making of clones, and your organs be harvested and the like for whatever you know building blocks are required for the kind of sick business that they get up to there. Making Snoke, which is actually a funny old thing, isn't it, where Andy Serkis was and wasn't in it, and then we don't find out what happened to him, and it could be a matter of, well, he comes back as that fucking Snoke, doesn't he? It's like, maybe he does. Maybe he's transported to Wayland and all kinds of experiments are done on him. Now, yeah, we'll leave that open. Fuck it. Yeah, let's give him a thrum a ball. Let's leave that open to the imagination. Very good, very funny. Just like Imperial rule. Story goes, doesn't it? It's like he's he has he's fucked up. He's got a lot of issues as as, as Andal, but it's a matter of, as he says, it's not about being afraid. It's about losing your fucking nerve. It's like he's lived in fear all his life. It's like fear is what keeps him alive. It's like he, he, it's what he is. It's what it's about. It's about fear and overcoming fear and banging. It's like, that's a different kind of person. That, that's like a rat that's trapped in a corner. That's what he is. story they drop about him where the uh, L Luther knows too much about him it's like uh, you were in the army you served at Nimban your whole squad was wiped out you ran away because you ran it's like that happened to Hitler you know he was the only surviving member of a platoon all his mates wiped out his last survivor of a platoon and or 
世界歌手なんだ Where it was like a, a, a thing they did to draft a lot of people into the Imperial Army to、um, use as cannon fodder in a war against some people who were separatists. They didn't want to cave into the Empire, so they fought and they fought and they fought and they fought. And it'd be a matter of these fed. Sent people to fight against an enemy that I did ideologically support if they had a choice. And they went and they fought and they died anyway. It's like World War I. So you, you survived Empire World War I on Min Man. Like Han Solo, he was there too. He escaped from that place, or、oh, kind of went AWOL in that terrible Solo movie that tries to do too much and ends up doing too little. So it's like this guy has had the rough end of more or less every stick, and in, his, in the way he sees the world, it's a matter of. He can just see with his eyes that these sort of imperial sorts are so arrogant and see people who are not them as being so low that they've given away the element of surprise, if you like. like they, they don't believe that anyone would ever have the nerve to rise up against them. So, what are you going to do on your own? So, well, what's he capable of doing on his own? It's like it's not covered in the show, but it looks like he's pulled off like, on his own a, a miracle bit of thievery. And he's sort of shifty moving around because it's like he ain't no good guy, is he? Cassian, and he'd be like, everyone in the end has decided the Empire's fucking worse than he is. And he's. One of the tools of the trade that's required to bring them down. And as we know, as the story goes, the Empire does fall soon. It's like the significance of the destruction of the Death Star be treated as being something serious. What would the answer to the Death Star be、uh, now in this day and age? It would be, it's already been and gone, isn't it? It's like the development of the atomic bomb. So we can kill all you with this fucker. We can make you pay. And it's like the, the, the,、um, the punishment sphere, as they call it. <laughs> when he, when, he, when he, he, he talked about it a little bit too honestly, the red letter media guy says the Death Star was a bad name they should have used. Something that was、uh, more politically correct and in, t- in, in view of the you know, Times, Death Star, but it'd been a giveaway. But it's like, no, that's important.、It's, it was named exactly what it was. But Punishment Sphere, pretty good too. Punishment Sphere, I like. Because that's what it was intended to do. It's like, we will fucking blast you with this thing if you threaten us. And it's like, that mindset in, in power. Doesn't even, it doesn't even stand for dissent, doesn't stand for ideas, doesn't stand for any form of rebellion whatsoever. And it's like it, it recruits people to itself with the huge us and them alien,、uh, humans first society. Where it's like the Empire pulls off tricks like we've,、um, we've reclassified Wookiees as animals, so now they've not got rights anymore. What? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're reclassifying them as, as, as a wild animal.、Mm, not going to stop you. Politically, not really a force. And、uh, incredible, apparently, a source of labour. <coughs> them control chips they put in the clones. Well, they learned a lot, them fucking cloners, when they did that. So it's like that technology eventually gets modified. Inserted in the Wookiees. Now, here's another one for you. When released from an Imperial prison, I think the logical place to be sent if you weren't sent to Wayland for medical experimentation, 
You'd be sent to the spice mines of Kessel and sold to the Pike Syndicate as a slave for a coin. If you still had any life in you, once you come out of Imperial Prison, you would be sold to the Spice Mines Castle and they'd make some money on you. And then there, they'd just work you until you died. <sighs> yeah, the fucking Spice Mines Castle. It's like, um, if you had, um, the thing is with the Empire, uh, as, as to where, as it's where it's, uh, started to fray is as to where uh, the, the kids manifesto right it's got loads of high magic in it like what like saying that billions have already enlisted in your cars and they don't even realize it being that's higher magic to know that someone to know that something is there for an absolute to know that and to see it as that it's like that's a chaos magician's way of seeing it, but it's like the only thing you're gonna, the only thing you've got available to you to bring down the empire, is black magic, is chaos magic, and it'd be a matter of all. When it, as he said, as Luton says, I'm left with the tools of my to fight with the tools of my enemy because. You know, if I use my real name, they just fucking lock me up and throw me in one of them stupid, absurd prisons. No man can stand against the Empire, but fucking shadows can do whatever they want. You know, shadows can move in and out. Just know how to carry yourself amongst different kinds of people as to what's expected of you. And if you look the part, the Empire... They've got a culture amongst themselves of covering up not to get in trouble. So they've got like an unbreakable code of silence in their own ranks as to where if something gets stolen or pinched or vandalised, they cover it up and they deal with it themselves because we don't need the bosses finding out anything, giving them an excuse to show us how powerful they are because they get to feel good about themselves going, giving their troops a bit of shouting at. So it's got its own inbuilt cover-up system. So now, understanding that the institution is that corrupt gives those within that institution a pretty much a license to steal and a license to um, become corrupted by uh, criminal forces. Those who get corrupted then by criminal forces then get corrupted by rebel forces. So the first thing you do is find an imperial on the take or an imperial who likes exotic prostitutes are like drugs spice and you get into him and next thing you know it's like hey kid you're in the rebellion now you see that's the thing with this one the rebellion in star wars is so dangerous to be a member of or so you're worth so much capture to find the other ones because the empire is so paranoid knowing himself that the M that the rebellion is out there Knowing in the same way as that kid knew, billions have already signed up. And he knows, it's like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm suppressing the human spirit itself to show God who's fucking boss. He knows that he needs to be eternally vigilant. He knows the spark of rebellion. It's like, well, how does he know? It's like he used the same methodology himself to bring down the Republic. Why subterfuge, sabotage? He just did it on a larger scale. He just did it at the top. And it's like the rebellion. The rebellion will eat it from the bottom. So I imagine now it's like a, you've got the shittiest job in the fucking world working at some Imperial fuel depot. And it's like, I'm working for the Empire because I've got like a family and the company I work for no longer exists so the only job i had was to join the imperial uh, army regular army uh, as a mechanic and here i am on a far-flung corner of the fucking galaxy in some unknown place fuel station and you're sat and you're talking in some fucking space pub to some guy and it's like uh, so what's money like well you know i've got enough for a few beer here and there and it's a matter of you won't 
don't uh, you you wouldn't be open to some like opportunity as to where you can maybe earn yourself a few more. And he'd be like, boom, I'd turn you into a disposable agent just because you run your mouth letting it known to me what anything, any of your business by way of empire, it's like someone allows you a certain level of access and I will happily fucking burn you to get my chance to strike at them. It's like, watch the Americans. <laughs> Fuck, fuck people over. Find a way in. Fuck them over. Ruin their lives. Get what you want. Fuck them. It's just a job well done. Ha! Capitalist pigs. So it's like, you find, you would find yourself, it's like, um, if you were like, you got yourself involved with something like uh, this. Is probably happens. Well, I'll use the I'll use the real life thing. I'll use the, just the Jeffrey Epstein. You go at the party, and all the all the rich people are in the in the club you're in. Oh, Jeffrey's such a great guy. And then out come the escorts, the young ladies, and likely. All sorts of people who broke their way into that circle who weren't trafficked, who were just like on the game and in the known. All those characters are in there. And it's like, oh shit, now just by being there, I'm somehow uh, now associated with, and I'm in a club now uh, that I didn't ask to be in, but I'm now up to my knees in whatever this club is. The fuck club. Oh no, I'm now in the fuck club because I'm here and I'm not speaking out about this. I'm saying nothing. I'm weighing up who else is in this room thinking, I'm probably going to get away with this. I think we all are. And I think it's hilarious. <clears throat> 25 years later, you've been blackmailed into the fucking ground. Aren't you? Done. You are someone's bitch. You're actually the bitch of anyone who's got the photos. If there's anyone left alive to cur, being a thing too. So it's them things running at once. It's like, find yourself in the Rebel Alliance. Find yourself in it. Well, now you're it, because why? Because you've been associated to it. It's like, you, the rebellion can, could be like becoming a Manchester City supporter. You just have to say you're a Manchester City supporter. I'm a Manchester City supporter now. Don't you be calling City to me. I'll fucking have you. Done. It's like that act of rebellion. It's like, you're a rebel. Yeah, I've been dragged into it. Because the, the empire is so terrible that the consequences come to me of someone who aided you, whether I mean, meant to or not, means that I die, get tortured. It's like, no, it looks like I've joined the rebellion. And it's like, you get there and it's like, so why are you guys? It's like, oh, we're outlaws, all of us, we're outlaws. It's like we're doing this for our own reasons, but most of it is, is to us. What else is there but hating those fucking twats? And then the answer is, well, earning money. What other, what other existence is there other than fucking hating those fucking bastards? It's like, under the under the auspices of, of that being the great thing in your mind that's victimised you facelessly, left you homeless, took your shit, blown your planet up. Now, before they had the Death Star, they would just bombard your planet with turbo lasers from space, which is what the planet of that Ferrix, where it's had its revolution, that's what that's facing now. It's like, this is a, in the sto as the story goes, it's like this little uh, insurrection, about this little, uh, let's call it, riot, it's like, they don't stand for that. 
You know, it's a, the droid, E E B two E more, right? He's actually escaped carrying a message. Being that Marva's call to arms and rebellion. And it be that's an important artifact, isn't it? it it's it, it's what the trigger was when she called the Imperials bastards and that officer ran out and kicked over the droid and then the big lad battered him with Marva's brick. <laughs> <laughs> battered him with Marva's brick for kicking over Marva's dried it's like you don't fuck with me and then it's like they, they kind of went mental and had the, totally had the upper hand against the the, uh, the empire they're just like um, them just calming down and there still being some imperial left is how order has been restored to that place and now the, the fear of retribution, it'd be a matter of, now the Empire can't control that place. All oh, right, okay, so we've got no stake in it now. All oh, right, let's, let's make those fuckers pay. There's a strong likelihood that the Navy would be called and it'd be a matter of, well, we've act of insurrection. So now that place get leveled, turned into a hole in the fucking ground with turbo layers of fire. Boom, 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 boom. And it'd be a matter of, Mining disaster on Ferrix. And it got to be a matter of, oh, we know what really happened. We got a recording here. Of the speech that incited it. It's like we got Andor here with a story about people who go to prison never getting out. Making some widgets for some fucking unknown project. The um, the brilliantly written chaos manual by the thinker, and it's a matter of he was a good thinker, but it's a matter of he wasn't. A, he, 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 I mean, I, I'm kind of a moral philosopher. I um, right. I understand watching that that I'd have been long since dead. Um, a moral philosopher who uses his real name would have been the first person that the empire would have either corrupted or got rid of gone so it's like i can't exist the moral philosopher it's a matter of what good did that get you with your fucking hippie jedi bullshit it's like they fucking crushed you and look what you look at the farces that you've unleashed on us the jedi did an important job keeping tyranny at bay in that regard they wouldn't stand for what the empire's doing they'd have been the ones who made sure it didn't happen and once they were gone no oversight no more no moral question of as the good or evil of things the Jedi were guilty of withholding technology it was the kyber crystals wasn't it it's like the the technology the unknown technology that is their lightsabers it's like they've been hiding from us it's true weaponized use and it's true weaponized use is that death star laser it's like them sitting on the kyber crystal of the planets that are sacred to the Jedi. It's like, it turns out these crystals are at the core of them. As that guy says, keep saying in Rogue One, the strongest stars of hearts of kyber. It's like, all oh, right, some, uh, a crystal that's uh, available at the center of certain planets. And if kyber appears on the surface, it's got kyber at its core. So it's like getting all of this stuff. It's a matter of like robbing all the Jedi because they've been protecting it, they've been collecting it and they've been keeping it themselves, all of it. So it doesn't end up in anyone else's hands and they were up to no good in a way. And the Empire then confiscate it all. And they had some bloody big ones. Confiscated all of it and, and worked it towards the Death Star weapons program. It's what the Death Star laser is when they say Death Star tech is that, it's kyber crystals. And then it's um, the Death Star's secondary use would be as a mining platform to vaporize, just slice apart these planets to get the kyber out of the uh, cores to make more Death Star lasers. So that's a good plan, isn't it? 
so that planet, that Star Killer base, is actually a, a, a formerly a, like a Jedi planet. You think it's Ireland? It's like a snow planet. It's a Jedi planet. It's like, yeah, they were to, to, to tap into the Kyber at the core of the planet and turn the planet into a big gun. It doesn't fucking work, but, you know, it kind of, yeah. They've, they've worked it in. It's like Jedi, and you're fucking Yoda's fucking kindness and fucking mercy and high wisdom and martial prowess. It's like, what fucking use is he now? It's like, how badly did they get defeated? And th th is there now a place for them? And it's a matter of, no, there isn't. They've all gone. All that's left. is to use the powers of chaos and uh, the almighty even, right? Against the will of the, empire, of the emperor. It's like, throw your force away. Your force is, fuck all. It's something that you boys at the top wield so you can do your fancy bullshit. It's like at the bottom, this is a, a, you know, an ideal. And having pushed the people so far as to they're just willing to fucking throw down on you. That's something that, you know, the farce isn't going to help you against a mob of fucking thousand people who want you dead. Isn't it? You're fucked. Unless the farce is a way of, like, getting you off the planet. You're fucked. It's like you stick your farce up your ass. It's like if, you get, if you've got, like, the will of the people and you've got it as to where the, the people have become so um, oppressed that they, they, they'd sooner die than continue to live under this fucking tyranny and they want fucking revenge I'd rather have that it's like that that force is is it makes the the, the force seem just like some kind of parlor trick it's like fuck that it's like no we're going to unleash the forces of chaos on the empire like what what can the force do about chaos and it's like absolutely nothing it's like you want to rule with dark side power it's like all right we'll take it down with dark side chaos how's that dark side order okay let's have some dark side chaos and because you're so paranoid because part of the tyranny is that you it's like the, the Matrix, you know, where they've left a place where people can, can go because you're, you're allowed to hate the Empire. That's part of their power. You're allowed to hate them. Just never do nothing, never say nothing. You're allowed to hate them. They know that's going on. That's why they're constantly vigilant. Because let's not be kidding ourselves. They, they are cunts. Bastards, as my as Marva said. So like anyone who's been mistreated by someone with arbitrary power can watch that show and be like, those Imperials are fucking twats, aren't they? It's like, yeah, it's like, uh, when were you last treated like that? NHS. <laughs> Landlords. Council. Government. Bosses. <sighs> um, I could almost smell the rubber in that prison. And it's like, this is like working for TBA Composite, but worse. Uh, no, TBA's worse, because TBA's filthy and smelly. But it's like, at least those guys, you know what I mean? They get, um, looks like there is a measure of fucking health and safety at work going on in that Imperial prison. As to where, no, it's, it's like, it's got the same vibe as, there's plenty of fucking terrible places I've worked. And it felt it. You know, that prison thing actually felt that as the... I'm trapped. Felt trapped with Andor and, and and be thinking of that. Certain situations where you're in, you found yourself in, and this is what you do for a livelihood, and you look at it, and it's like... I'm doing this? Like, you fucking shoot me. Shoot me now. Put a fucking bullet in me. Shoot me. Like, no, 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 we can't shoot you. Why? Because you're worth money to us. Oh, so you're not coming anymore. All right. Feed you to the system. 
my system do? I punish you for it. Punish you. Oh, okay. It's like when, when it when it comes to sort of when we get to the edge of the, when I'm saying <clears throat> uh, labour shortage and so things like that. So there's a labour shortage. It's like no, there isn't. There's, there's a massive, massive pool of uh, like niche unskilled labour and tremendous value. And it's like we don't want to pay for it anymore. What? It's like as simple as that. We don't want to pay for it anymore. It's like, have you, have you gone mad world? It's like, yes, we've gone mad. We want to cut the size of the workforce dramatically in order to enhance our level of control over the people. Stirring you in the face. So there's shadows, right? The shadows of that end door as to what the world is for some in certain parts of the world where we have forced labour and we have conditions of like occupying forces. I mean that that and dog will have spoke a real tune to people in China working at Foxconn making phones for Apple and things like that. It has struck a real card with those people who's, who, who in essence could be seen as forced labour and uh, there's many working class people in the world who could be seen as forced labour too. It's like working full time every hour God sends and still in absolute poverty is the is is the uh, rule as far as I've seen. It's like I didn't go to the right schools, didn't have the right friends, didn't join the right clubs and had a, 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 a different kind of education and it's like um, what makes your education better than mine? It's like the world faces forces that I understand that you don't. And it's like, um, why do you know things that we don't? It's like, um, you know, how old were you when you learned to play pool? <laughs> or what age did you start to occupy places full of no good people? At what stage did you find yourself under the influence of, of Fagan characters when you were a kid thinking you knew everything? Because, hey, I'm a big boy now. I'm, I'm in the last year of school. It's like, what company did you keep then? It's like, <clears throat> if you fell in with fools. I had a mixture of g genius, fool, criminal, straight shooter. I had a whole fucking choice of people I could pretend to be or act like when you're nobody when you when you know nothing and you I've been that fucking clueless teenage fucking drunken idiot I have been that guy I know what it is to be that guy it's like <laughs> These like the academics understand how you know reckless people can be. Do they understand uh, as to how brave they can be in the wrong situations to prove themselves? It's like we live in a wicked, wicked world. Anyone who would think that they have it within their power to make it, make order of it, right? is the empire is, is trying to impose a tyranny on you because it's a matter of they ain't got the resources to root out criminals. It's like every other person would be a, a copper. It's like the place is corrupt. I don't think there's an institution in this world that isn't corrupt. It's like the, the empire is, you know, the, 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 it's corruption's ultimate whitewash. Mr. The, the final word in, yeah, it's corrupt, but what the fuck are you going to do about it? It's like the, the ultimate Obama victory.
is like something akin to the Empire exists in a great deal of places or has existed in the past. There's plenty of people lived under occupation who to see them troops reminds them of the day when they lost theirs and it be the same enemy. Because why, why couldn't it be, you know? There's like so many different flavours of rebel. In those rebels in that show, I see myself in, in one or two of them. Um, I'm not the slow learner that Cassian is. Cassian is a slow learner. He gets it. I think he gets it at the end. He gets it. He's driven and it's like, this is it now. But he's a fucking slow learner. He knew everything he knows now back then. He didn't have to go to jail. But he's a slow learner, so he had to be bashed by reality one last time before he's like, you know what? Those guys were right, I should have stuck with them because look where I am now. And then he makes himself a second chance to say, you know what, you were right, I should have joined back then. There was no need for me to go to prison for however long he was in there, six months or something. I fucking told you. So like we could have we could have had you sort of working already for us and it's like the, the shit you're capable of and the know-how you've got and the savvy you've got with your straight up doing deals with fucking criminals dodgy people is like almost the, the, the ultimate toolkit for us rich people who are funding and fighting this rebellion because he's, he's fallen in with the, uh, the cell that, Aunt, that uh, Cassian's fallen in with. They're all like galactic uh, elites who are slumming it as rebels. They're rich people. And it's like they haven't got that torch he's got. They've got no idea about the ins and outs of how it works at the bottom. And he brings with him, like, <laughs> he brings the toolkit of him and his purpose and his because he's got plenty of different skills but he also brings his dad's clear sightedness clear headedness and his mother's um, need to have done the right thing to know she'd never be able to forgive herself if she left that kid on that ship for the empire to find It's like she played God in saving him in some ways. Uh, but she never she never um, um, never gave up the responsibility of having done that, which is like that's admirable, isn't it? But she never gave up on him because it's a matter of he didn't ask to be rescued, she rescued him. And it's like, well, she wouldn't have been able to live with herself if she hadn't. So that's it. It's like you've got a kid now. So like he was lucky. How was he? Might he, might have he been better better served in his life to have died at the hands of the Empire on the planet he was born. Last thing as to where the living people are a loose end, aren't they? When push comes to shove, living people who who who, who know things, are living people who are witnesses to things, living people who could tell a tale, are a loose end, aren't they? For a system of tyranny, it's like we don't need you. You see, I'll tell you something. I always look out for. Right. When wicked people die, right? People who are influential in know things and have got powerful friends who, and who can do damage with just words, they still maintain, they still have that power right up until the end of the days. Right up until death, they've got that power to lash out with a tongue. 
And as, as old tyrants die, some of the fear dies too. And people actually tell the truth about what people were like. And But it's also said in our culture that it's wrong to speak ill of the dead and it'd be a matter of one absurd rule. You can say it might be that this person's like lit some kind of fire in the world that's living far beyond these expiration date and it'd be a matter of, oh shit, yeah, we just can't escape from Karl Marx, can we? Dead for so long. And, and plenty of others. Being dead is not the end. The game carries on without you. You should be really, really uh, cautious about what you put into the world. Knowing that that's going to be the end of it. It's like, for one reason or another, you might have made a mark that lives on. And if that mark you left was one of lies and deceit and creating a trap that others fall into. It's like, how do we fight that? <sighs> Great smashing of icons is required, but that happens all the time, doesn't it? And has to be done again and again and again and again. Because it just doesn't stick. The, you know, the, 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 those seen as the historical intellectual giants of our culture, they just, it doesn't matter that every word they ever said was debunked as being just narcissistic, Malthusian nonsense. It still gets taught, still has to be debunked again for a whole other generation. And uh, while that's going on, the little thieves are at play.